Hello everybody, this is Eric Pistelli from Anticore and in this video I'm going to show you the improvements we've made for the 3.1 version of Cerberus Suite. You can follow the detailed list on the company blog of course and I'd like to thank everybody who left a comment or a feedback on the previous video. So, the main addition in the 3.1 version is the support for ELF files in Carbon. Uh, this is a very small sample I'm opening as you can see, it brings us to the entry point and we can follow it to the main function. We can see strings being resolved and um, imported APIs being called. So that, that, that's that. Awesome, right? No, just kidding. I didn't have much time yet to play with it. Uh, but this could be actually something for a next video. Me testing the functionality against, I don't know, some crack me or challenge. Um, so testing it against reality, which is important, of course. The second uh, feature and third feature are basically the same. Um, we've added the, well, I've added the edit bytes command to Carbon. It modifies basically the bytes in the database without having to, without having them actually modified in the file on disk, which is important. Um, you can follow the blog, and I wrote uh, an article in an in-depth article. Uh, about this feature and it's quite uh, I don't know I, I would say it's awesome no I'm just kidding it's actually a very basic uh, functionality for a disassembler it's important to have the ability to change bytes uh, in the database itself so what I've did is uh, I crafted a small um, executable with uh, XOR strings let's go to one of the uh, XOR strings um, Oh, well, wait, I um, I had opened the wrong executable. This is the one. Um, let's go to the puts or put s. I don't know how you call it. Put s, put string. I don't know. Strange. So anyway, this is the function which um, prints the strings on screen. And um, this is, um, these are all in, uh, in XOR, not encrypted. They're just XOR so that we can actually rename this to decrypt, this is the function which decrypts them. These are all uh, source strings, it pushes the address of the string and its uh, size in bytes. And what I did is I wrote a small script which just fetches all the references to this decrypt method and then from there it gets all this push address. And from there I decrypt all strings with and patch them in the database, calling this um, write on the database itself. Well, so now we can see the strings in plain. Oh, sorry, wrong. Here. These are all decrypted strings. And uh, again, as I mentioned, it's only in the database. The actual file on disk wasn't, well, there's also a file on disk, but not the uh, executable, of course, it wasn't patched. And then we have uh, the detection of 16 byte, sorry, byte, yes, yeah, sure, 16 bit wide strings in carbon. Let's take an executable which has them, in this case, kernel 32. Man, four seconds, this is too slow. I have to make it even fast. Uh, let's go to one of the strings. This looks like a string which could be 16 bit wide, yes, exactly. And if we follow it back, we can see it uh, correctly resolved. So, or let's say detected. So that's that. Uh, what else? We have the open in hex editor. Yeah, I've added this functionality, which is quite useful because it often happens that we need to patch an executable we're analyzing. Uh, this is actually something very simple. I, cra I crafted a very small executable which uh, just asks for a password. I'm gonna put test here and it's wrong password. Oh, this is surprising, wrong password. I thought I was much more lucky than that. Anyway, uh, let's go back here and what we wanna do is we want to follow the string, wrong password, back to the reference. And what it does is basically there's a scan F and then a string comparison with okay but we don't want the actual password. In this case, we want to patch the jump. This is the jump which evaluates our password. 
so what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy this to another file because we only want to patch the original and now we can open here in hex editor so let me it's already selected and this is our jump we can just knop it and save it and close and now execute again right password awesome so oh yeah also filters I don't know if you're familiar with filters let me open back the sample with the obfuscated strings um, and that's fine one of these strings again I always proceed from the put string function yeah basically filters are quite useful because you can do lots of things with them I'll show you in a minute uh, you can Control T to open them or contextual menu, of course. And let's just decrypt it with XOR. Not twice, just once. So, as we can see, now the string is in plain. And we can use filters for many things. We can hash or, I don't know, um, compress, decompress, encrypt, decrypt, and uh, disassemble or even create an array for one of language of our choice we can choose a language and then it will create an array we can import and do stuff with it so it's actually useful for many things um, oh i added also the monokai team um, i've used this team for some development projects and i liked it so i thought well, let's see how it looks like in the disassembly i don't know if it's actually comfy to reverse engineer with it but i just think it looks cool it looks awesome actually no, just kidding. But uh, I'll try it out and in, in case I'll improve it a bit. But I like the colors, to be honest. Man, man, I, I, I. Always me. I should be paid more for all this. So, uh, control, ah, yeah, single view mode. We always had full screen mode, uh, which is this one. And this could be useful, actually, I guess it is, but well, most programs have full screen uh, mode. I honestly, I've never used it because it happens too often that you are in full screen and you want to um, look at another view. And what I've introduced for this version, let me show you better by uh, minimizing the, the window or let's say not minimizing, but reducing maximization. Oh, this is annoying yeah much better even more yeah now we have a very reduced window and if we press ctrl alt s we go into single view mode and this is actually much nicer than a full screen mode because if we open another view like filters for instance we can still see it and when we revert back to our normal view everything goes back to normal and the views we opened will be tapped to the previously focused window. So this is actually quite nice in my opinion because for instance if you have a view with lots of information which you have to scroll to look at we can just select it Control alt s and if we open another view it will correctly show and if we go back everything will be as normal. Everything will be just fine. So Oh yeah, we improved a lot the deployment in, on Linux uh, because this was something even me, I dreaded sometimes, well no, not sometimes, all the times, uh, installing the program on Linux because of all the dependencies and uh, now it works on most uh, distribution. Tss, that would be funny, I mean if it would just be one, one distribution and it's mine and you and you can't have it, it's just mine. It's, it, it works only on my distribution, sorry for that. It's your loss, I'm <laughs> oh, just kidding. So it works on all uh, or most distribution, I cannot promise all, this is impossible on Linux, but it works on most distribution or at least should be. And if it's not, yeah, pity, I did my best. So anyway, the x86, x64 disassembly has been improved. Um, this is actually easier if I show you with yeah this executable 
let's look for instance at this API CRT unhandled exception if we follow this call we see it just uh, jump to the actual um, import address table entry with for of course CRT unhandled exception the the point of it is that now these calls to jumps or jumps to jumps are all resolved automatically and we can see them resolved automatically this improves readability of course a lot in my opinion and we improved the hex workspace um, actually the hex workspace was fine the only improvement is that now uh, the output window is not automatically shown you can still um, show it manually or like by entering an, an expression in Python and it will show automatically but initially in the default layout it's not shown this improves of course a lot because it's a very small improvement but it's annoying to have it always open and we of course uh, also we updated uh, the awesome capstone engine to its latest version and we fixed some bugs we squashed them we eliminated them terminated them they're gone Anyway, um, I'm actually excited to show you in a while uh, some of the cool stuff I'm working on. Yeah, I'm very modest. I'm already saying it's cool. No, it's actually, I think it's cool. And uh, I, ho I hope you like it. Uh, and uh, well, I'll show you in a bit. Bye.